Hey, first graders, it's my favorite time of the day because it's math time. And I hope it's your favorite time of the day too, but it's okay if it's not. All right, so let's take a peek at a question behind me. My head is hiding it. I think I'm going to move out of the way. You got a sneak peek. We're thinking about 10. Woo, 10. Oh, and there's a, oh, something missing. And a set. oh, there it is. Seven plus something missing makes 10. Okay, so what do you think? We've got to figure out seven plus what makes 10. All right, so I want everyone to hit pause right now and take some time to think seven plus what makes 10. Hit pause. Okay, I want to hear it on the count of three. Nice and loud. Tell me what you think the answer is. Ready? One, two, three. Tell me. Tell me again. Did you say five? Maybe five. I think I heard a four out there. Anybody with a four? Anybody for a three? How about a 10? No, that would be seven plus 10 makes 17. That couldn't be it, right? Okay, so let's check out. What do you think? Seven plus what makes 10? Who can prove it? Hmm. Is anybody sneaky out there? Did anyone use my yellow dots? Let's see. How many yellow dots do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 10 yellow dots there. And if we circle seven of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many left are there to make that 10? There are one, two, three. So seven plus three makes 10. And we call that a friend of 10. So seven and three are friends of 10. They always go together, right? So you can actually see that on your fingers. If you show me your fingers right now, you show me seven of them. We have one, two, three that are still down because we have 10 fingers and seven plus three will always make a 10, right? Just like seven or actually six plus one, two, three, four will always make a 10, right? So we'd have to lift up four fingers to get all the way to 10. All right, so that makes a friend of 10. Now. We're gonna take it up a notch, kids. Now we're gonna think about not 10, but 20. So seven plus what makes 20? All right, everybody hit pause so you can have time to think about seven plus what makes 20. Hit pause, go. Okay, on the count of three. Ready, nice and loud. One, two, three, tell me. What'd you get? 17? No, that can't be it. Hmm. What did you say? I think some of you are telling me it's 13. Because I bet you noticed my sneaky little trick. Instead of 10 this time, like it was last time, seven and three made 10 last time, just like this. Seven plus three makes 10. This time I just threw another 10 on there. Whoop, just like that. And so I was thinking about that 20. So seven plus what? So there's my seven plus what would make 20? So I'd have to add a whole 10 and a three more. Okay, so that means 13 is our answer because 13 is made up of a 10 and a 3, right? So that's 20 altogether. 7 plus 13 makes 20. Um, I bet some of you noticed something else that I did that was a little sneaky. So let me switch my colors here. I'm going to get orange, one of my favorite colors. Actually, it is my favorite color. Okay, so maybe you noticed that I just added 10 here. And the seven stayed the same Z's. Same. So I just had to add 10 on there. Hmm. Maybe some of you noticed that. I tried to be a little sneaky, but I bet I didn't get it past everybody. Did I get it past anybody out there? Probably not. All right, guys, we are going to look at our story. Now, here's an interesting fact. There, first off, there's an interesting fact that there's a word called roosting. Have you ever heard of that word? I know, it's weird. 
Um, okay, so there's a, a thing that turkeys do at night that is different from what they do during the day. And turkeys do something called roosting in trees. So usually turkeys are on the ground, kind of gobble, gobble, gobbling around. But at nighttime, they have to kind of keep themselves safe while they're sleeping, so safe from their predators. So they go up in these trees and they roost. So when they're sleeping in the trees, it's called roosting. All right, so here we go. Roosting turkeys. Here it is. There were some turkeys roosting in a tree. Hmm, turkeys were roosting on high branches. And hmm, turkeys were roosting on low branches. How many fewer turkeys were roosting on high branches than low branches? All right, so we have to wrap our minds around this. First, it's a big surprise that turkeys sleep in trees. What? And then we have to think about the story. There were some turkeys roosting in a tree. Hmm, turkeys were roosting on the high branches. See them up there? A little higher. And there were hmm, turkeys roosting on the low branches. How many fewer turkeys were roosting on the high branches than the low branches? Okay, so fewer turkeys are gonna be up there, which kind of makes sense to me because I don't really think turkeys like, like heights that much. They're not like regular birds. So there's gonna be less turkeys down there and more turkeys up there. All right, so let's find out our numbers. Here we go. I almost ran out of paper on this one. I spent too much time thinking about roosting turkeys. I wrote too many words. All right, here we go. So, shall we do two and 10 this time? Let's do it. There were some turkeys roosting in a tree. Two turkeys were roosting on high branches and ten, uh, 10 turkeys were roosting on low branches. How many fewer turkeys were roosting on high branches than low branches? So, two up there and down there. How many fewer were up there than down there? Here's the big thing though. Can my answer be 12? Hmm. If there are 12 turkeys in all, because two are up there and 10 are down there, can my answer be that 12 fewer turkeys were roosting on high branches than low branches? Hmm. It doesn't make sense, right? So we have to really think about what the story is asking us before we start solving. Okay, kids, tool time. Get your stuff. I'll see you next time. Bye.